In the vast tapestry of history, certain individuals shine like stars, their names etched into the annals of time. Yet, there are others whose stories remain concealed, their remarkable deeds hidden from the spotlight. One such extraordinary figure is Losan, an Apache female warrior whose tale embodies courage, resilience, and a spirit that knew no bounds. As we unravel the untold story of Losan, we come to realize that history has not always bestowed recognition upon those who deserve it most. Yet, her memory persists as a testament to the countless unsung heroes who have shaped the course of human existence. Join us as we delve into the enigmatic life of Losan, the most feared Apache female warrior, and uncover the profound impact on her actions on the tumultuous tapestry of history. Let her tale inspire us to embrace the strength within and remind us that even in the face of adversity, the power of the human spirit can overcome all challenges. Native American warriors such as Sitting Bull or Lakota, Tecumseh or Shawnee, and Geronimo or Apache have long been thought as safeguards of indigenous lands. Their valiant resistance in opposition to foreign invaders contributed to their cultural survival. Losan, an Apache or Nde woman who went to war with European dominance, was a lesser known fighter. Losan was a warrior shaman and humanitarian in nature, known for her bravery, skill as a soldier, and commitment to her people's safety during a highly turbulent era in the Apache history. For 30 years, she fought against Mexican and American soldiers, which earned her the title Apache Joan of Arc. She grew up as a member of the Warm Spring Apache Band. Her father was the band's leader. Losan began mastering the art of fighting and horseback riding at a young age. While most girls her age and society were preoccupied with housework, cooking and early weddings, Losan was preoccupied with military plans, sword combat and archery. The supreme chief of the tribe she belonged to deemed her capable of participating in the war. Losan was able to ride on a horse and shoot. She is additionally believed to have utilized supernatural abilities to keep an eye on the enemies. She was a close friend of Apache Chief Geronimo and the sister of Apache Chief Victorio. Although these guys are more well known to historians, Losan is still considered a legend on behalf of her people. Losan is my right hand, Victorio pointed out of his sister once. Strong as a man should be, braver than most, and strategically astute, she protects her people. She had been born in the Chihen Apache Band at Ojo Caliente, New Mexico, around 1840. In what was then known as Apacheria, there were at least seven Apache tribes and many clans living in what is now the northern part of Mexico, the eastern part of Arizona, and the southern part of New Mexico. The Chihen Band which is additionally referred to as the Eastern Chiricahua or Red Paint People, had been identified by the Red Clay Band worn around their faces during rituals. Apache tribes were well known for raiding and were always on the lookout for targets. Joey Padilla, a traditional doctor and museum curator at the Mescalero Apache Reservation in New Mexico, claims that the Apache had previously been nomads. These men have never stayed somewhere for long, he announced. Losan's name, which means dexterous horse thief, symbolizes her ability to infiltrate behind the lines of the enemy undetected, draw out gathered horses, and steal them. During an extended period of near constant conflict, her stealth and courage would prove invaluable. When she reached the age of majority, Losan started to battle Mexican soldiers and scalp hunters, her band's eternal enemies. She battled again after Americans appeared in 1849 to lay claim to her homeland, Peter Aylshire says in his novel Warrior Woman, the story of Losan, Apache warrior and shaman. Losan has sparked debate among academics, with some dismissing her as a literary fiction. Eve Ball, an internationally recognized Apache historian, first learned about Losan's stories while researching her 1970s novel In the Days of Victorio. Losan's prior anonymity was due to Apache's reluctance to acknowledge that an unmarried woman was accompanied by men on raids, according to Ball. Losan excelled at taking rides on horses, shooting, roping, and horse theft, according to her sources. 
and Victorio regarded her on the same level as other men in combat and would not embark on a raid without her. She was born and raised in a matriarchal society with a divinity known as White Painted Woman at the core of her creation tale and she realized early on that women were essential for survival. Lawson went through a difficult childhood at a young age. She had a lovely family and a nice household but the fact that her dad told stories about Mexicans entering their home frightened her to the core. When she returned from playing with her brother, US military personnel were attempting to lure them with lavish presents and asking them to leave the area and relocate to an alternate location. When the Apaches refused the offer, the armed forces began firing at them. Lawson fled with her brother Victorio, but several members of the band were killed. It had a terrible and terrifying effect on infant Lawson's mind. She then vowed that she would preserve her kingdom and the population there at whatever cost. Her youthful eyes saw several conflicts and many horrible deaths. During so-called peace talks between Indian council members and the gold hunters, Apaches were frequently slain. They wanted vengeance for every life lost at the hands of their adversaries. Mexican prisoners were periodically abducted and presented before the tribe, chained and gagged. The daughters, wives and mothers of the dead Apaches would then slay the males. Lawson watched as they dismembered the miners with knives or crushed their hands under the weight of their horses. The strong counterattack eventually caused the Mexicans to quit the area and flee south. However, the Apaches' problems were far from done. She was revered as a warrior lady in her day. According to Padilla, the Apaches were constantly accompanied by a woman who walked directly behind the man who was carrying a knife or gun. You had to deal with the woman as well if the man passed away. Women protected their children from harm as well. Apache kept their tight gender norms and lived with a highly regimented existence. The female members gathered food and helped with home chores. During the battle, Apache women were taught to gather items from their homes and flee to a safe location. They would get up before dawn and each sprint to the top of the mountain as part of their rigorous physical training. Lawson carved out a niche for herself at the time. She was an excellent runner and a talented horse rider. Lawson was capable of using a spear, bow and rifle. She would train her young generations in sword fighting and horseback riding. Lawson had never been married and never had children. She adored children and wished she would have her own. However, her personal difficulties prevented her from giving birth to her children. She recognized her own kid in Apache Kids and gave up on her life for the protection and improvement of the children in her community. A girl named Datesta, one of the members of the Chaconan band and an effective warrior, accompanied Lawson on several raids to protect people. According to Apache tales, Lawson and Datesta were regular partners at this period. In a famous shot of the Chiricawas taken immediately after the captivity, they look snuggled together. In the 1930s, Apache informants informed anthropologist Morris Opler about two nameless women who lived together and had sexual intercourse while imprisoned, unquestionably Lawson and Datesta. The Treaty of Hidalgo established New Mexico as a U.S. territory in 1848. A gold rush in California that year drew a few thousand mine workers through Apacheria. Lawson, when she was 12, went through puberty religious events in which she walked on her own into the mountain terrain and, allegedly according to oral legend, got a mystical ability to find enemy soldiers. According to Harlan Geronimo, Geronimo's great-grandson, Lawson would raise the palms of her hand and take walks in a circle as long as the veins in her arms became dark blue, signaling the exact location from which the enemy would certainly approach. With this kind of help, Apaches could foresee the enemy's next move and plan their next step accordingly. It also assisted her in avoiding being captured by the enemy. She was frequently compared to her European counterpart, Joan, due to her God-given ability to sense the enemy's presence. The conversation between Geronimo and Lawson is passed down through the generations. Geronimo saw Lawson closing her eyes hard. A blast of wind blew across her little figure, flinging her straight black hair around. Can you let me know if someone from the armed forces is nearby? He inquired gently. I can, she said. For a few moments, she stood motionless, her arms outstretched and her hands slightly cupped. She said, 
The god Usen has granted me this ability. It's good for the reason he's good. Geronimo with his men stood there, waiting for Losan's response. Her eyes sparkled as she opened them. She was frequently driven to tears by the strength she had been endowed with. She felt not worthy of such a wonderful gift. She looked into Geronimo's eyes, and she turned to face the proud faces of the waiting warriors. Rest easy, she said. There is no enemy nearby tonight. In 1861, Chikonen Chirikawa chief Kochis was wrongly accused of taking away a rancher's son, leading to a 24-year battle between the United States and a number of Apache clans. Kochis and an additional chief led 200 warriors to combat at Apache Pass in 1862, but were driven back and scattered by howitzer artillery fire. Lawson went to war at Apache Pass, was admitted into the council as a warrior, and battled for years in the struggle for their home nation alongside her brother Victorio. Lawson was believed to have been involved in a horse attack at Fort Craig, where Apaches fully equipped with weapons, such as bows and arrows, robbed troops of their horses. In 1869, she attended an official meeting with Victorio and other Apache chiefs to create a reserve plan near Ojo Caliente, but they were eventually relocated to the harsher circumstances of the San Carlos Reserve in Arizona. Victorio, Lawson, and other Chihan walked away from San Carlos in 1877, eventually choosing battle over returning. They parted ways to avoid capture and Lawson subsequently guided an entire group of women and children across the roaring Rio Grande River in Mexico. An infant, James K. Waitler, remembers riding alongside his grandmother when the Cheyenne tribe escaped American soldiers. K. Waitler claimed to have seen a magnificent woman riding an absolutely beautiful horse while carrying a firearm above her head. Lawson rode back over the Rio Grande and rejoined the combat once the party arrived in Mexico soaking wet and cold, but alive. Lawson once left the band in order to assist a young pregnant lady in crossing Mexico's Chihuahuan Desert back to her home located on the Mescalero Apache reservations, armed with a single gun, a cartridge belt, a knife, as well as a three-day ration of food. During their voyage, she hid the expecting mother and supported her in labor and delivery, slaughtered and butchered a longhorn cow, and eventually caught two horses. Lawson assisted the lady into the foliage and, after she was confident they couldn't be seen, let the pregnant mother give birth. Lawson sat with a gun across her knees, watching the horseman approach with wary eyes. She put her palm over the mescalero woman's lips to hide her sobs. When the infant arrived, Lawson cut the cord with a piece of blank flint and tied off the stump with yucca string. The tiny boy moaned slightly. Lawson prayed over him and handed him back to his mother. She drew her rifle and glanced out into the dense undergrowth at the troops. One of the scouts appeared to be looking their way. She pressed her finger towards the gun's trigger. She was going to have to shoot if he went too close. Just as the scout approached the three, he came to a halt, turned around and galloped away. Lawson, the mother of the child and her boy, had been left alone. Victorio was murdered in an assault at Tres Castillos, as well as several other Apaches. Some speculated that Victorio was unlikely to have been ambushed if Lawson had been present. She and the other Apaches managed to elude the U.S. cavalry for an additional five years. The Apache people were resentful and enraged after being separated from their families and driven from their country. Lawson defended her people with savage raids and essential battle tactics. They were pursued throughout the terrain like a cat and mouse game. Lawson and the Apache people sought survival from New Mexico through Arizona and south into Mexico. Lawson rode in tandem with Geronimo right after Victorio died. She went along with him in a raid that rescued 600 individuals from San Carlos in 1882, and she again aided him on his very last escape from the reserve in 1885. Geronimo opted to give himself up in 1886 to secure the safety of his surviving followers, according to his family members. Geronimo, Lawson, and the others were shortly thereafter sent to Florida jails. The Apache were unaccustomed to their new environment, and many are claimed to have died from illnesses like diphtheria and tuberculosis. Lawson was one of them, since she died from tuberculosis in 1889. 
She died due to illness in Alabama at the age of 50, but some of her family members made it back west. She was laid to rest in a grave that was unmarked in Alabama. People later discovered it and paid their respect, and an inscription was engraved on the gravestone. After the wars were over, we brought numerous of the Chiricahua from Florida, Jory Padilla explains. He claims that his Mescalero reservation group followed the women's coming-of-age practices that Lawson took part in over 180 years ago. The surrounding community also continues to honor Lawson's legacy. The descendants of Lawson's ancestors are here currently with us in our community, Padilla explains. She was remembered as a brave woman and one of the best warriors that history has seen. Her gift from God, her wisdom and courage made her like that. Many men in that field could not approach her. There were a small number of such capable women at that time. They all wanted a family and housework while leaving the fight to the men, but not her. She was different in everything and that's why she stood out the most from the others. She had her goal and she stuck to it while she kept everything else in another place. A skilled fighter and a caring member of society. What more can be asked from such a woman? Many in today's world would envy her. There were several people that history will remember, but she is special. A gift from God meant for her and her people? Coincidence or not, it remains a mystery. If you like this content and want more videos like this, hit that like and subscribe button. Leave us a comment about what you think of this brave woman warrior. Thank you for watching.